at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time, and we have to talk about practice because a lot of big news is happening. Just seems like we can't get away from the great news that is San Francisco 49ers, and I'm excited to talk about it because there's some cool things going on as they're building for this last preseason game against the Raiders, and also, you know, getting close to cutting this roster down to 53. Um, We're kind of getting a little bit of signals just from who's practicing and how things are going, how this roster is going to end up, and it's exciting for us to try to figure it out. Always exciting for us to try and figure it out. So make sure you hit that subscribe button right now. Hit that like button as well. Share the video with the faithful so they know what's going on. They can find out what's happening at practice. And they can draw reasonable conclusions about what's going to happen in this game and what you can expect to see because there's a lot of things going on in practice time. Let's start with the fact that there were some guys that that sat out that were, I guess, DNP personnel type players. Yeah. Uh, the, the the big name that I wanted to talk about because it's a, it's a name that People are used to seeing out there and playing and performing. Jalen Moore did not practice on Thursday, left practice Wednesday with an unspecified injury, wasn't out there again. Juwan Jennings was a DMP. He wasn't out there practicing, but he was out on the side field doing some stuff as well. So that is potentially some good news there for Juwan Jennings. He needs to try and get healthy and stay healthy because if he can, he's got a decent shot at making this 53-man roster. Yeah, I think that would be bad news about Jalen Moore if he was hurt more than just you know something nicked up um, if he can't play in this game, that's one thing. You're not really concerned about him earning his roster spot on this 53-man roster. So you could sit him. Well, ultimately, you want him to be able to do his play against Detroit if needed. The good news is you have Trent Williams in front of him. Uh, I think the only bad thing is you were hoping that Jalen Moore was going to be able to take reps you know, at the guard spot um, where they were looking at him maybe to see if he was you know, some sort of ability to take over. Maybe he was one of the five best offensive linemen on this football team. Uh, giving him an opportunity to win that position, which now he's ultimately not because you're just missing practice. Um, but I think as long as it's not something serious, I'm okay with this. We'll see what happens. You never want to see these guys get nicked up, but I'm hoping it's just a nick and not something um, too bad. I think if it was too bad, we would have heard about it, but we won't know until Kyle Shanahan lets everyone know. You mean to tell me that Kyle Shanahan keeps things close to the belt sometimes and doesn't just let information get out there? Pretty much, yeah. Oh, okay, that's fair. Yeah, that's, that's accurate. That's what happens. Uh, look, Dre Greenlaw left practice early as well with the trainer. No real word on what's going on. Um, I, I'm not really sure what's what's happening there, so we're just going to have to kind of wait and see with that. Uh, Jason Brett also was a DNP for the 49ers today, but he's not injured, folks, so just take a deep breath. He's just taking some vet days off leading up into this game. He'll definitely be going through walkthroughs on Saturday, so no worries. Yeah, I wonder what Dre's dealing with because Dre missed practice on Wednesday and then Thursday – um, he leaves early. So there's got to be something to that. We don't know what exactly that is. Not yet, anyway. You know, hopefully it's something that's not serious to, once again, not worried about the Raider game. Will he be healthy enough to play against the Lions? That is what they're working towards. So if Dre can't play against the Raiders, it's no big deal. Make sure he can play against Detroit. So they're going to be extra cautious with these guys, and hopefully Dre is being extra cautious with his own body. But he's a guy out there that usually only misses one game. He doesn't usually stay out for an extended period of time. Um, he's pretty durable, so hopefully he's just, you know, something maintenance-wise that he needs to take care of, and he'll be good to go. Correct. Uh, and one of the big names that people were freaking out about was Raheem Mostert. And we talked about this. Raheem Mostert left with a back injury. 49ers fans everywhere started smacking the panic button. Oh, my gosh. It's time to freak out. This guy's not going to – he's getting hurt again. This time it's a back. Oh, he's back. He's back at practice, moving around just fine, didn't look affected at all. And that's great news because if Raheem Mostert's healthy and good to go, this offense has a home run hitter that can ho- hit home runs Pretty much any time you want to hand him the football, watch out. Rest of the NFC West, watch out NFL. This O-line is getting healthy as well. You finally have the pieces you need in Alex Mack at center. Brunskill able to play guard, not jump around. Lankin Tomlinson solidified there at the left guard spot. Mike McGlinchey getting bigger, getting stronger, still looking dominant as all can be in the run game. And, of course, obviously, the best tackle in football in Trent Williams. Yeah, that's the time. Any Anytime you have a home run hitter like that, um, it takes your offense to another level because at any moment, if a defender even is a half step slow, this guy is gone. So they have to be, you know, playing at the top of their game. They got to be paying attention at all times. Plus, you just have to buy into the play action more against Raheem Mostert. 
These other guys are going to have to establish that they can carry the ball at that level. Once they do, then they'll get similar respect. But right now, everyone knows that in a blink of an eye, Raheem Moser can take it to the house no matter where he's at on the field, and he can go off for over 200 yards in a game, and you just can't let that happen as a defense. So they put a lot of focus on him when he's in there and playing full speed. That creates other opportunities for the offense. Um, so it's always big news when he's out there. You're always nervous about a back, but like we said, we didn't know if it was a, a helmet to the back or whether it was just a muscle or something. It appears it was something not serious, and he's out there. Um, I didn't mention Jason Brett, and I know people are concerned about that. You said it's not an injury. I wouldn't be concerned because he's a veteran. Uh, if I, if he wasn't a veteran, I would be concerned, but I'm not concerned about him because of that. Yeah, it's it's this is more like more than likely a vet day than it is anything else, and because there's been no report of it. I, I just I don't feel nothing has happened right. No one saw Verrett limping off the field. No one saw him doing anything crazy or you know working with a trainer. This, he's just not practicing right now. They're just letting this guy rest, making sure that he's healthy, making sure that he's ready to go. Um, I imagine he's going to get a little bit of run on Sunday. I would imagine like a series just to keep his legs fresh and then get him out there and get him ready for week one against against the Lions. Um, because you want this guy out. This is your best secondary player on this team hands down bar none this is your your best guy you don't need him rolling out there right now doing a bunch of stuff keep him healthy keep him fresh uh, and let's get him into season with his confidence sky high and his body sky high yeah let's see if he goes through walkthroughs on saturday and then plays in the game uh, that'll be a good signal of where he's at physically but it's a guy that understands his body understand what he needs to do maintenance wise to stay healthy um, so you always trust him and this medical staff to get it right I like that they're being you know, cautious with him, and I like that he's making sure that he's going to be right when it comes time uh, to play in football games. Correct. Uh, Cam Inman talked about, he's from the, the, the Mercury News, he talked about the 49ers demonstrated unlimited potential. I love it when people say unlimited, unlimited because then it just gets, yeah. throws us right back to Russell Wilson's interview. That was, thanks, Russ, for that, by the way. Yeah. Danger, Russ. That was, that was incredible. If you missed that interview, you should go check that out. It was, it was high quality. <laughs> Some of the best content we ever put out on the channel, for uh, sure. I don't oh. know about best quality, uh, but it was definitely entertaining quality, that's for sure. That's for sure. It was definitely entertaining. Uh, but look, uh, the 49ers, he talked about how while everyone's focused on the quarterback, that wasn't actually the most entertaining part of practice yesterday. I wonder what it could have been, Ant. Could it have possibly been the fact that you had Nick Bosa, Samson Ebucom, D. Ford, Eric Armstead, Javon Kinlaw all out there on the field doing things and mixing in together? Could that possibly have been it? Could be. I think it was. Yeah, it actually is. <laughs> um, yeah, 100%. You get those guys out there mixing together. Uh, the matchup issues you know, that it causes. Now you've got speed guys that can play on the inside as well. D. Ford and Samson Ebicom are built big. Um, so they can go on the inside. And then the stunts that you're able to do. But uh, anytime you get matchup issues like this, and Kinlaw is a matchup issue because when you have edge pass rushers like D. Ford and Nick Bosa, they will go ahead and make sure that they you know, get around the outside. As long as you have somebody like Kinlaw and Armstead that can push the pocket and collapse it on top of the quarterback, that is what's going to be huge against Russell Wilson and, uh, and Kyler Murray because then they have no place to escape. When you, when you just have the edge pass rush, it leaves windows and avenues for these guys to be able to step up in the pocket, move in and then out around. So you want to make sure you get that full collapse from the inside, and these big guys inside can do that. So this is going to be a nice marriage of things. But I'm also all for getting that speed out there where Armstead is the slowest guy with Ebucom, Bosa, and D Ford. Because I think the things that you can do with these guys and you couple in a Fred Warner blitz could absolutely destroy offensive lines. There's no way you can block all these guys, and there's no way you can double team all these guys. No, you can't double team all of them. You're gonna have to keep extra guys in the box just for four names, which is crazy to think, right? If you're an offensive line, there's five of you. You should be able to to, to handle it. You should be able to handle these four. You can't. You can't do it. And you're not wrong about D. Ford and Samson Ebucom, especially Samson Ebucom. If you throw that guy on the inside in any way, shape, or form, he, he's a big dude. He's not small. He's strong. He's physical. He, and he's got a quick first step. So you get a quick first step going against interior linemen who typically aren't going against quick first step guys. You're going to have a problem, especially if they can't get pushed around. There's so many different ways you can pair them, right? Uh, Domingo Ryan's talked a little bit about when you have guys like D. Ford and, and Arden Kibos and Samson all available, they can all do different things. They're extremely talented, right? Your potential and your, this, everything's sky high. It's unlimited is what he said. And that's where he got the name of the article from. So, I mean, Cam Inman, that was a great job taking the quote. and it's, 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 good. it's good stuff. I like it. I like when we connect, right, to actual things that are being said. Uh, but the reality of the situation is, is when you got all those guys who are big, strong, physical, and fast – 
you you have matchup problems because not everyone on your O line is going to be. I mean, when was the last time anyone ever saw an All Pro O line? This isn't Madden, right? Where you can go draft and and go trade, you know, a bunch of nonsensical stuff in order to get the best center in the league, the two best guards, and the two best tackles, and no one ever touches your quarterback ever. It's not how it works. You give and take in certain areas. There's certain positions on offense that you value more on the line than others, right? We've talked about this before with Shanahan. He has certain areas of the O-line that are very, very important to his scheme and his system. These guys have to play at an, at an elite level in, for, in order for the offense to function the way he wants it to function. That's the same case for every team, except sometimes it's different positions, right? Left tackles are always going to be important for pass pro stuff. But sometimes your center or your guards are going to be more important in terms of their agility or their ability to get downfield, making second level blocks, pulling, you know, being strong. Maybe you don't need a fast guy. You need a big, big burly guy who can just, you know, move guys around on the inside and create running lanes in the middle. Um, you know, it, it differs team to team to team. So when you got a, a D line that when you just take out the speed stuff, when you don't talk about the Boses and the Ebicoms, you got the big bodies like Kerr, huge physical athletic specimen that is Javon Kinlaw, right? Eric Armstead, who can play both interior and exterior, can move around. Um, it, it just becomes it becomes too much. There's too many things that you have to try and account for on any given down or any given situation. So if you're an offensive coordinator, it's a nightmare to prepare for. You're hoping that the guy, these guys can't be on the field. Um, and McDaniels talked about that a little bit, right? It's so exciting to see these guys out there finally getting to watch the full gold rush and then also at the same time as an offensive coordinator, it's a nightmare. It makes your job the wor- it's the worst. It's the worst experience because these guys are so talented. They create and cause so much havoc. And your quarterback has to not only be crafty, he has to be intelligent as well. Because if you start bringing blitzes, he's got to be able to audible out. He's got to be able to recognize and diagnose where the pressure is going to be coming from and then make the right decision on the fly. Yeah, they went completely scheme fit, right? That's what you're trying to do is get guys that fit your defensive scheme. And that's exactly what they've done. They've got guys that fit that. And what they've got guys that can do is do it all. Now when you're in these early downs and it's obvious rundowns, they have the beef in the interior where they can stop the run. That was the problem with the 2019 defensive line is they didn't have the beef in the interior to be able to stop the run. Even the depth pieces weren't very big. DJ Jones was the only guy that really brought that size. The other guys were all kind of light, right? Whether it was um, Julian Taylor or it was these other, you know, uh, Buckner, whatever. They were all lighter. Now you've got Kerr, you've got DJ Jones, you've got uh, Hurst. A lot of big guys you can play on the inside, uh, Kevin Givens, if he makes this roster. Um, you got these guys that can play on the inside, but then when it gets to obvious pass downs, and I forgot Kim Lowe, I don't know how I did that. He's the hugest guy on the team. He um, is. He's gigantic. Yeah, but now when you get to obvious pass downs, you have that change up, that line change of guys that can come in and then put pressure on the quarterback. Um, so what they've done is been able to diversify that group to be able to handle all situations that an offense can bring to them. This is not good for, for offenses because if you, if you think that you're going to be able to move the 49ers off their spot because they're really good pass rushers, you're not because at that moment they could be really big and physical up front. And the times that you think you're going to be able you know, to get away with the, your speed being more than theirs, that's when they put in their little drag race group and they go after you. Uh, it is not good for everybody else. The stunts and things they're going to be able to do, couple that with the fact that you've got the best linebacker in football and a very good secondary to go with it. Now, there's not a lot of depth in that secondary at the corner position yet, um, but these guys are developing along the way. This is this defense is going to be dynamite. You put in the fact that you have this ex- elite pass rush on third down with the fact that you no longer have to play zone, but you can play man as well, man matchup zone, on th- I mean man uh, on – third down, and yep. then you can bring a blitz. This is going to be lights out. There's going to be a lot of times the 49ers get off the field on third down, which typically they weren't able to do sometimes when they had to run strictly a cover three because of the personnel grouping or personnel people they had out there. Correct, and you're going to be playing deep thirds. You're going to give things up under middle, and when you're playing third and sevens and things of that nature and covering a deep third of the field with your corner, you're susceptible on the on the outsides, outside the numbers. Like That's where you're going to be susceptible. Um, you're taking everything out right, deep part of the field, deep shots. I don't think so. Giving stuff up underneath in the middle, great. Taking away some of the middle stuff, but if you got receivers who can operate out there outside the numbers and a quarterback who can put the ball out there in space, you're leaving yourself open and liable. Now you're not having to rely on that, right? Like you just said, you can mix it up. You can run some cover two. You can run some cover zero. You can run cover one straight up. Doesn't matter what it is. You can disguise coverages, show six, run t- t- so many different options and variables now that defenses and o- offenses, excuse me, 
can't look at the Niners and know, hey, when we're in third and eight, third and twelves, we know what they're doing. They're going to run, you know, cover three, and they're going to have this kind of blitz package coming at us so we can keep these guys in, put these wide receivers in these positions with this tight end in this position, and hopefully, you know, it's the right call and we're able to, to exploit this here and get a first down and pick up this gain. Now it's, well, God, they could do any number of things, and, and pretty much anyone could blitz, and they could only they could run a cover three here but then send a, a safety blitz. One of the safeties could come off the edge with, with a linebacker. Oh, God. You start thinking and start thinking, and now you have other things that you have to factor in and when you have other things you have to factor in, it becomes a lot harder to predict or make the right calls offensively in order to put your team in the right spot to convert. And that's what you want for the 49ers. And that's the great thing about D'Amico Ryans is the creativity along with the, the talent that you now have at the cornerback position. Guys who aren't just boxed in to one area, they can do a lot of different things. And, you know, that front four helps out a lot. So that's always a good thing. Yeah, the fact that he's going to cut down the amount of time that a quarterback is able to read coverage um, you know, last year, a lot of times it was four or five seconds. This year with this elite pass rush, it's going to be three seconds. And that's about all you're going to get. You have three seconds to get back there. In today's football, that is not enough time. They're going to have pressure in their face. They're going to have to make quick decisions. When you have to make a quick decision, you might miss a Fred Warner dropping into a zone. Or you might miss, you know, Jason Brett pushing on that football and coming up with an interception. Turnovers will be happening in, a, in an alarming rate when you get this defensive line playing at top level. So, that's an exciting part of this game, and getting these guys back this week has been really exciting. The fact that we're hearing D. Ford is progressing to the fact that he could actually play in the preseason game. You 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 put that with Nick Bosa and Kinlaw, man, it just got nasty. You just went you know from zero to sixty real quick. I'm looking looking forward to the way the Raiders have to handle this. Uh, you let go of a lot of good offensive linemen, and now you're gonna have to pay for it. And we talked about this defensive line, and in that article he mentioned Arden Key, and we didn't even bring up Arden Key, and that guy's another guy that can come out there and play on base downs because he's a very good pass rusher but can also set the edge. Uh, Sky is still the limit for him in his development. The more time he works with Chris Cesaric, the better he's going to get. I wouldn't be shocked if he doesn't you know, start breaking off some nice games down the road. Absolutely. Don't be shocked if Arden Key turns the corner here and, and actually you know, grows into the people that, that – grows into the player, excuse me, that people thought he was going to yeah. be. When he got drafted and came out of LSU, he looked like a guy who had a very high ceiling and then nothing really came of it. That stealing still exists. The potential aspect for him to grow as a player is not gone yet. He's still a fairly young man. So I look forward to seeing what Casera gets out of him because, as we know, you and I both know, and hopefully most of the 49ers fans and the cutback crew for sure knows by now, Chris Casera is an incredible coach and has done an incredible job of developing talent. No matter where he's been in the league, he's going to continue to do that, and we've gotten him a lot of great pieces to continue that trend here. Yeah, 100%. They're making sure they give him the guys he wants. Uh, he wanted Kinlaw really bad. Um, and you don't come to the 49ers unless Chris Kacarek ultimately wants you. And they know that, you know, he brought the wide nine with them when he came. We did not run the <laughs> wide nine uh, in San Francisco until he brought it. So it, it's, it's, it's nice to see a guy that gets out there and then they uh, allow him to kind of find the guys that he knows he can mold and build. And so far that trust in him has really worked out. 49ers getting the players that he can develop, him developing him, whether – their first, second, third round, undrafted. No matter what it is, you see these defensive linemen come to San Francisco and play well. Accurate, Ant. Very accurate indeed. And look, we'd be remiss if we didn't obviously talk about the quarterback situation. And quarterback watch 2021. One of the most hype aspects, right, of, of the 49ers in the preseason and training camp and all that fun stuff. And go get your training camp 2021 t-shirts at 49ersCutbackShop.com because they will be going away soon they will. with preseason wrapping up. So make sure you get those before they're gone. Have a piece of history. You you want that history. History on this channel. History in the fact that you have two trays as rookie. You get it. Anyway, besides the point, look, a lot of things going on with this quarterback room. They're intermixing these guys. They're really meshing them now. Um, the Shannon plan is being unleashed upon the defense to an extent, right? We had some situations where Jimmy Garoppolo was operating when they got into the red zone. Trey Lance came in and capped off a couple of drives in a shortened drill ant and then in an actual drive, move the ball type situation. I know, so stunning. We're so surprised over here. We've been literally calling for this for I don't even know how long now. Um, and funny enough, Tyler Menting had tagged us on, on Twitter today too, Foot from Football Unlocked. If you missed that or didn't see that cutback chat, make sure you go check that one out. It was a great one. Um, but he was talking about how, well, you know, this eventually could work into, you know, Trey eventually taking over at some point, and he keeps pinning that that week six po coming into the Colts game as being the time where it could happen. 
Look, it very well could be the case that at some point in time, Trey Lance takes over. But as of right now, the idea is, is both of these guys in unison throughout the year, sometimes Trey starting right, sometimes Jimmy starting each and every practice now. They're finding more and more ways to mesh these guys and work them in together with their units, right? Two practices ago, Jimmy rolling and Trey coming in for five snaps with the first team. Trey rolling with the second team. Jimmy coming in for five snaps with the second team. Trying to get the players and the guys used to them flopping in and out and get them used to it as well, right? Start to get a rhythm. Cut that rhythm off. Get the other guy in. Let that guy start going a little bit. Get him out. Get the other guy in. And again, trying to get them used to it and working through this. Yeah, you have to do this. Whenever you're putting in any position, uh, players have to u- get used to going in and out of the game and then being able to go back in and pick up right where they left off. It is not something that's easy to do, especially for a quarterback that's used to being on the field all the time, used to pulling the trigger on everything. Now, we're not surprised about Trey Lance coming in in the red zone. This is something we have been saying for weeks now, that this was going to happen. Ultimately, it's going to happen, and we're going to get these guys out there, and we're going to we're going to see what they can do. Uh, as far as Trey Lance goes, um, you know what? I don't know when he's going to start. But what I do know is right now Kyle Shannon knows he's not ready to run this offense in full. He's not ready to turn over the reins to Trey Lance because he's not. he doesn't think he can run it to a level he needs him to run it to win football games. So what he's going to do is use the skill sets and the things that Trey Lance can do um, that are really good that he can use right now that are ready. Uh, why would you have somebody sitting over there that doesn't have every, you know, that you could use part of his you know traits to um, to your advantage. So he's 100% going to use him and use the things that are ready and the other things he's going to keep developing until he eventually takes over as a starting quarterback. When that is going to be, I still think it's going to be later on than everyone else thinks, but um, I think that it, it's it's inevitable. But using these guys together and using their skill sets to your advantage is the most important thing. Agreed. It has to be the most important thing. You have to try and find a way to utilize all the things that you have. And the Niners gave up capital, right? So the idea that they were just going to sit on this guy and just wait a whole year was kind of just, it's just hard to wrap your head around. You gave up a lot to bring this guy in. You want to try and get something out of him now and ha- let him and allow him the opportunity to have an impact with this group. Um, and I think it's why this this makes sense with what they're doing. But it also makes sense as to why this this team has kind of rallied around this, right? They've rallied around this idea of, of the two of these guys having an impact and being able to coexist in this locker room, right? There, there were some questions being thrown out about whether or not they can coexist and whether or not there'll be a fraction in the locker room. And McDaniel talked about this a little bit, and he, he talked about how you know, the Niners have really insulated themselves from this in the locker room because everyone is focused on what it takes to win. He, he said specifically, and I quote, when you win, personal validation happens for everyone, right? Mm-hmm. It happens to everyone. The common goal has insulated us from everything else, right? Them having the common goal of winning football games and winning a Super Bowl is the only thing that matters, and whatever it takes to get us there is what we're going to do. Everyone is bought in. Everyone has that in mind, and when everyone has that in mind, doesn't matter if you're the guy who does it or the guy behind you is the one that does it. You know, you you help to push each other to get to this point. Whoever goes out there and executes it, great. It's what's best for the team. You know what? This is a completely unique situation for a couple for a few reasons. Number one, you have a quarterback like Jimmy Garoppolo that is allowing <clears throat> this to happen. Accurate. How many quarterbacks in the NFL will allow this to happen? Not very many. Trey Lance for knowing his his way and his situation for being a, a guy that's more of a team player able to say, you know what, I will do this, I will work with Jimmy Garoppolo, and we will make this happen together. And then a locker room that is completely trusting of Kyle Shanahan. Never can anyone question whether this locker room is completely bought into what Kyle Shanahan and his coaching staff is doing. This is evidence of that. This is one team, one belief. And we've said this from the beginning. None of this stuff gets out. None right? They've been saying for weeks that Kyle Shanahan, or we've been saying for weeks since Kyle Shanahan brought up that he had talked to the locker room about this, about there being a dual quarterback system, which was bizarre to me that people are just now coming around to it because they saw it in practice um, because Kyle Shanahan kind of alluded to this, that he'd already discussed it with everybody. Um, But at that situation, nobody even batted an eye. And that, to me, the fact that none of that got out to the media until Kyle Shanahan said it meant that this team trusted Kyle Shanahan so much they didn't tell anybody either. They're a tight, a, a tight, close-knit group. Think about that, right? Players have had interviews where they've been asked about Trey and Jimmy constantly, constantly asked about Trey and Jimmy. You know, how do you feel about, how do you feel about, how, how, who's, who's looking back, who's, uh, not a single guy said, I don't know why you even bother asking me this. We're going to use both guys. Yeah. No one even let it slip once because the plan's in place, right? 
these people are going to say these things about this. They're going to question all of you and all, everyone about these things about who should be the guy. We're going to use both. We don't want anyone knowing that we're using both until we're ready to tell them. But anyone with half a brain is going to know already, right? Every coach in the league knew when the Niners made the move up that Trey Lance was playing this year some way, shape, or form. When you're seeing Jimmy Garoppolo out there taking first-team reps and Trey not, you know what's going on. They're building something, something very secretive off there in the distance. I wonder what it is, right? It's like it's like Star Wars. They've come up on the, that's not a star, that's a space station. It is. We're building an arsenal, right? An arsenal offensively in which you can utilize any number of players in any combination, any way that you want in order to attack a team and, and give yourself the best opportunity to win. Trey Lance being on the field makes sense. It does make sense. Will it make sense always? No, because he has weaknesses right now, just like Jimmy has weaknesses. And when those weaknesses are on display, guess what? It won't make sense for Jimmy to be out there. It'll make sense for Trey to be out there. Yeah, it depends on what team you're playing, what personnel they have, what scheme they run will ultimately determine how these players are used in football games. Uh, also, situational football. All of that's going to play into it, and you're going to put the player out there that gives you the best opportunity to win. How is this different from any other position on the field? You know, this week we're going to play Raheem Mostert because that team is a little slow to the outside zone. We want to get him to the edge and let him make a play. The next week we're going to focus more on inside zone. So Trey Sermon, we're going to attack the inside where they're weak and really get to it. All you're doing now is doing that with a quarterback. That is the only difference. It is kind of, you know, a out of the thought or out of the box thought process um, because they always used to say you can't have two quarterbacks. But Football's changed, right? There's a different skill set. Back then, it was two drop-back quarterbacks. Now you have quarterbacks with different skill sets that can do different things and stress defense in different ways. Football's evolving, and you have to evolve with it. Some people are just ahead of the curve, and that's what Kyle Shannon is right now, ahead of the curve. Just ahead of the curve. Yeah. Yeah, more of the schemers. Plant. Yeah. Man, he's like the Joker, all in one that's crazy. Yeah. Kyle got, Shanahan, man, you were you were one heck of a guy. He's got plans. He's got lots and lots of plans. Look... There's still other things to talk about, too, and we'll hit a couple of them uh, before we wrap up today. Uh, Jalen Hurd in back-to-back -back practices for the first time, all training camp, all preseason ant, catches passes on consecutive days during team drills. He's making the roster. It's time to go bold. Yeah. It's time to go crazy. It's time to have a hot take. It's hot take Friday. It's not hot take Friday, but Jalen Hurd, back-to-back -back practices getting out there, trending towards good things and potentially seeing Jalen Hurd out there on Sunday, Ant. I think so. I think this is what you're building towards. You wanted to see him have these positive Agreed. days of practice, get out there, make plays, and then get him to the game. Uh, if he can get on the field and then produce in that game, and then after it's over, tell Kyle Shannon he feels good. Um, that is what you need from him. That's what you want from him. But he's a playmaker, and you want that dynamic ability available to your football team. You don't want to give up on it just because he's had bad bumps in the road. Uh, it's unfortunate that injuries happen, but you've seen this happen in the NFL before where you have guys that couldn't stay healthy and then all of a sudden it all clicks and they're out there playing consistently and dominating. So um, I don't, I'm not saying by any means that he's going to dominate right away or anything like that. Right now, all I want from him is contribution. And if we can get contribution, then I'll be very excited because I know what his potential can be. And trust me, I know there's a lot of people that are detractors. Go ahead and jump on the positive bandwagon. The train, the herd train is rolling, you heard? Go ahead and jump on and be excited. What's the worst thing that happens that he gets cut? That's okay. At least we roll with them till the end. Choo, choo, all aboard the herd oh, train. He, he, this is the last stop. It's your last opportunity to hop on now before you look foolish or before we look foolish. One of the two is going to happen. Hopefully it's not us. And like I told you, I'll eat it. I don't care. Correct. I, I, I went on record as saying, you know what? Yeah, I'll eat it. And that's fine. If people want to throw that at me, that's cool. You want to throw those blems out? Throw blems. <laughs> <laughs> throw the blems. All of the, yeah. all of the blems. Look, it's going to be very interesting. There's a lot of things coming up here. We still got another practice leading into right this, this preseason game. We got walkthroughs on Saturday. So make sure you're subscribed. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell as well. That way you're here for all the daily episodes, including a special episode right after this one. You don't want to miss it. We're going to talk about two highly contested to topics, I guess, per se, and comments directly from Kyle Shanahan. You don't want to miss it. The video is going to kick right over to it. So just stick around. It's going to take you there. You don't want to miss that. Also, Ant, we got something releasing today, don't we? Yeah, we do. You need to make sure that you hop over to our Patreon. 
uh, and sign up for that because a 49ers cutback in time new episode is debuting over there. Uh, so you want to make sure you catch that. That is also debuting today. You don't want to miss it. Also, go ahead and become a member of you, our YouTube channel. Uh, join it. You're going to get a lot of great perks with that as well. Whether it's emojis, whether it's badges, right? As, as things grow on this channel, member-only live streams, early access to videos. That's right. You get to watch videos before they even go live, so you're even further ahead. You can show off and spoil things in the Discord. Please don't do that. Don't spoil it <laughs> in the Discord for everybody else. But right, the channel memberships here are going to allow you to do so many things. It's going to give you instant access as well to our fantasy football and our Madden leagues. So if you only want to do one, great. If you want to do both, you can do both. The channel memberships on YouTube give you that. Patreon is going to have tons of unique content, whether it's big yikes, cut back in time, fantasy football videos, Madden full gameplay, and the thing that we're most excited about, all 22 film breakdowns. You're not going to want to miss any of that. So make sure that you join the Cutback Crew today. We are, There are more ways than ever to be a part of the Cutback Crew and support this channel. You can subscribe, Super Chats in the live streams, on the premieres for our videos. You can join Patreon. You can join the channel membership. You can even just subscribe if you haven't already, like the video, and share it. And join the Discord, chat it up with the rest of the Cutback Crew in there. Yeah, and no matter what you decide to do, we appreciate you being here. Absolutely. Appreciate you watching. Appreciate you taking the time to leave a comment and interacting with the other 49er fans. Um, so no matter how you decide to do that, we appreciate you no matter what. But uh, we're just giving more avenues for you to be able to get content and interact with us. Uh, and it's a lot of fun. And I've been enjoying it so far. Absolutely. And the best part is, too, everything that we're doing on Patreon, everything we're doing with the channel memberships is going to be going right back to you anyway because it's going to help us create more shows to put out on the daily channel here. So that means more content for you here on YouTube, more ways for you to watch even more topics to cover, and special guests potentially as well. People from other teams, lots of interviews, tons of things coming your way. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you support everything, and head over to the Cutback Shop and rep the Cutback Crew and get some Cutback Crew gear. It's some nice stuff over there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, anything you can do, join us on the socials as well. But yeah, head over to the shop, check it out, peruse a little bit. Um, there'll be some new stuff coming up within the next couple weeks uh, that we'll be launching and some new attire that you can grab. I will be grabbing mine, I can guarantee it, um, because I, I like it, and it feels nice on the skin. It does feel nice on the skin, and, and it's uh, very creative stuff indeed. Everything we do here is pretty accurate. Cutback Crew is also very accurate, so make sure you become a member of that wonderful Cutback Crew. And until next time, 49ers fans, you stay safe. And remember the right way. Is always the 49ers way.